No. Watch this, the man at X that I represent for exclusive. Baby, let's go. Welcome to our website. We got loads of news and gossip for you today. But first, let's hear some news song. I couldn't, in good conscience, get up this morning and put on clothes and say that I'm going to work. Not after that bomb that Nigel dropped on us yesterday. But you know my viewers, may I tell you that this now look good. Now let's get into it. Now here we have the financial minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, has announced increasing salary for parliamentarian under the public sector compensation act. Now this increase of demand is just like an extortion. It's just like the people them don't have no conscience. And they tell me to listen with politics. That's why I'm in the politics, you know. I me don't want nobody to come associate me with no political party. Because me don't do politics. Because politics are politics. Because look how them politicians, you know, take hard-working taxpayers for fool. Now, with the new rate, the Prime Minister salary moved from 9.1 million to 25.2 million, effective from April 23. I'm in April 24, which is the year coming, in salary, I got increased to 28.5 million. Now that this has happened, I've had almost... <laughs> <laughs> and now all of the politicians them across the board, the Deputy Prime Minister, him increased from 8 million to 25 million. And all of them is just some ridiculous numbers. And it may not even get into it, guys. Dear phone if you say. Now this is just a insult to the hard-working taxpayers people in jamaica now i'm going to check out with some of the people them some of the private sectors some of the hard-working taxpayers how them feel about what is unfolding right in them eyes in the little island of jamaica this is disgraceful when teachers were getting two million dollars per year plus allowances the pm was getting nine million plus allowances and due to the restructuring of salaries, teachers are now getting 2.5 million per year, no allowances, and they move the PM's salary to $28 million over the three years. Teachers got $30,000, well, I got $30,000 over a three-year period. And the PM and other members of parliament are getting $19 million. Isn't that disgraceful? Nigel is saying he wants to attract the best minds, the brightest minds. I am one of the brightest minds in this country right now. When I was at UB in 2011, I did not score not even a single B. I got straight A's. I graduated with a master's with distinction. I am one of the brightest minds and you give me $30,000 over three years and giving other some dunce counselors who never have CXC 12 million dollars I am no longer patriotic I no longer care about nation building I will never unless this changes I will never sing another line out of the national anthem I will never say another pledge in Jamaica. The only land I will say in this anthem is deliver us from evil powers. This cannot be justice. This, we cannot as a country sit down and allow this to continue. We cannot. We should not allow this government to take us and turn us into some puppet show. Our own country. Jamaica, at least we come to. You understand? And it's time people on a wake up, on a need for wake up and see that, you know what I mean, what these politicians are doing is no right. It the right or the blind. Or, well, that what we're going to do the people who know that quick for come and say, me attack about the prime minister or me attack dirt or whatever. But look at what the man doing. Look at what the politicians are doing in Jamaica. Are them thing you're only for address. Uh, my reaction really all um, salary increase to the government. Everybody deserves to get raised, you know. Don't get me wrong. But I think that was too much and too fast. You understand me? Uh, over 200% increase and they're not even willing to increase as regular worker more than 10%. So 
I think that was just too drastic for one. I think them basically El Jamaica that uh, runs up. I think it's excessive. It's way overboard. Because I look at all the teachers and all the other public servant persons who were just the other day striking and doing all of that to get a little increase and they were negotiating the hell out of it. And for them to go and do this now, it's too much. I mean, even if there, it was a, I would, I would be fine with 70%. I mean, it's overdue for them when they just came in power. We know they didn't take a salary raise. But that amount is excessive. No, absolutely ridiculous. It's too much, brother. It can't work. That are too much in a one go. If I even... Two more million added to it, three more, it would have good. But all at 25, too much that, brother. And it have, it's a pressure into the whole entire country. Yeah, man. I don't think they should have get that high increase. Not say so they not deserve to get a increase, but that is way too much. Yeah, that yeah, is way yeah, too much. Because yeah. we the taxpayers, they might go dig we don't have to pay for them get that. That is it. Teachers deserve it. Because they work hard in the classroom for it. So we know that already. Now it's good to see that there are still some good people left in politics. Can't hear ever split within the PNP party. Can't hear of Dr. Adrian Utton, the PNP caretaker for Western St. James. I will also have Peter Gay Ferguson, the General Secretary of the PNP Youth Organization. I will have Julian Robinson, who is an opposition spokesman on finance. They all in odds over the huge increase which Nigel Clark is offering to both GLP and the PNP party. They all in odds over it. I'm going to play a voice note with them and discuss the odds between them. Because Peter Gay Ferguson felt that the opposition spokesman for the PNP on finance should not accept the offer which Nigel Clark has made him. Because frankly, you know what I mean, she felt like it's corrupt. I mean, you know what I mean, it doesn't look good on the rest of the nation. Where teachers aren't getting paid. You understand what I'm saying to you? Where teachers are getting this small amount of increase while these politicians are getting these humongous, outrageous increase for no apparent reason. Now, let me take a listen to what they are saying now. The government's recent decision to double, in some instances, even triple their pay while only providing a 16% increase to our teachers, our police, and our nurses is really appalling. And it shows us that now more than ever, we have to discuss how Jamaica is going to remove itself from the grabs of these people who have been providing health care in a failing system without resources our teachers then we have to question everything that is happening we do not feel as though any member of parliament should within good conscience accept this salary increase at this time when other public sector workers were offered a what 20 percent increase over a three years period the government should reconsider this increase and look at something that is more appropriate we're not saying that they do not deserve an increase but a 300 percent increase or almost 300 percent increase is unconscionable given the other situations and things that are taking place especially with public sector workers we don't feel that it is right at this time and speak of the opposition takes no issue with what the minister has announced. We would urge the government to deal with the anomalies that exist for civil servants who have been granted increases and where there are discrepancies in their salaries to urgently address those anomalies so that everyone can benefit from the new compensation package. But we take no issue. Madam Speaker, the opposition takes no issue with what the ministers has announced. We take no issue. I'm also going to make you take a listen to what Lisa Anna, because one thing with Lisa Anna, she always attacked in the people's best interest. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're whatever you want to be, whether you're, you know what I mean? She always speaking in the interest of the people of Jamaica. The adequate amount of fertilizer, water systems, so that the yams that we're producing in the boxes could be supplying the tri-state area and we would have People wouldn't be scrambling to be looking for two containers of yam consistently leaving our shores, which is what is happening now. People cannot get an adequate supply of yellow yam, which they want in the United States. They're taking it from Nigeria and they're taking it from Ghana. Absolutely. It should not happen. Our shipping systems are a lot better here coming. Rather than taking eight weeks, eight weeks it's better coming from here. So logistically, 
we should be reorienting our agricultural system, Madam Speaker. And not only doing it for yams, but it's, it's, we need to recognize that we must adapt to the world of globalization because globalization is not adapting to us. It's actually the other way around. And so even the global demand for hot sauce, we're not participating in it. We're not having our farmers designated to say, look, go into pepper farming. You know why? Because in 2020, it was a $4.3 billion industry. And by 2026, it's going to be $6 billion. Right now, there are companies beating Jamaica with some taste bad pepper sauce internationally that tastes like salt and vinegar. When you can have so many other companies like Walker's Wood and Spur Tree and others that just need for us to start setting up the value-added factories that they can plant all the pepper in the world. That's what the Dominican Republic and that's what Costa Rica does. They have redesigned their markets to plant and to produce plantain and, and banana chips. Most Jamaicans don't realize that most of the plantain chips that they buy in Jamaica are made in Costa Rica and made in the Dominican Republic and distributed here because big companies, because they have economies of scale. What is it that we're producing? What is Jamaica known for internationally that we export? What have we put our farmers in? We've been doing it for the last 100 years the same way. That is why, Prime Minister, Floyd, give me a minute here. That is why, PM, I'm so excited about this new bamboo pulp investment, the $60 billion investment that's taking place in West Milan. And I want you to understand that they need 25,000 acres of idle sugar land. What that will do for farmers, they, it, at least a thousand farmers can be planting bamboo. And it's a long-term sustainable export project yeah. that will give bamboo hold to the rest of the world. We need more investments like that so our farmers can actually have a, an adequate supply. When I talk to a, a St. Thomas farmer, woman, grandmother in St. Um, at the St. Thomas market, for example, who has her granddaughter sleeping on her lap on a Saturday morning in the hot sun. All of us have that in our constituencies at markets. And she has to come up because she has to sell one box of planting. She has to sell that one box of planting because she has to send that child, her grandchild to school. Because everybody, the grandmother still maintains the grandchild in some multi-generational homes. But she shouldn't have to do that. She shouldn't have to leave where she's coming from far to sell one box of planting. She should be able to know that Jamaica has planting factories that if she plants her entire one acre in planting, she will have a market for it and a demand for it. And they will come and pick it up. But we need, we need to have the factories, we need to have the cold storage, we need to have the dry storage, and we need to have the supply chain from the beginning all the way to the packaging, yeah. from the inputs all the way to the manufacturing of the finished product yeah. for the export. No, Luton, Luton and I work well together. Yeah, man. No, it's just that we don't want to need home. We don't want to need home. The fact is, Madam Speaker. Deputy. Madam Speaker, the truth is we can be doing better. We can be doing a lot better. And we can be doing better because we have all of the, the ingredients for that value chain from the beginning all the way to the end. And we have the shipping. We're so, we're so geographically positioned adequately to ship. But it takes vision. And near to market. If if we put our farmers in priority crops, if Rada comes back to me one more time and asks me to give incentives for Irish potato, I think I'm going to scream. Because it is not earning foreign exchange for our farmers. Yeah, I know. That's fine. The issue of producing efficient farmers to make a good standard of living must be imperative at this point in time. We must give our farmers guaranteed prices on priority crops, and we must support them for export in agriculture and value-added products with low food prices for Jamaicans. And if we do so, we can also build a school feeding program to maximize the use of local produce, Madam Speaker. Here, here. You're going to say artificial intelligence made where 
do the work without saying she's tired or do the work so she has to go home. How are we going to survive in a society like that when we are not geared towards that kind of understanding? We need to understand what is taking place. When a computer can ask you, must prove say he's a robot, you know, say, it can't clear. A robot, I say, tell the human being to prove say a robot. A robot, I tell a man to prove say he's a robot. It get away. So we have to recognize which power they know and the education where we have feed the youth them and prepare them for this new wave of intelligence that will sweep the world. There will be no more paper money or coins to contend with, a little more from this. Right now, sometimes you don't have to go to a bank for draw money out of your thing. You don't go up on a computer. There will be no more physical bank that you can walk go in a farm line that cash you have to go to. That will be totally irrelevant. So, we just tell you, because it's just a warning. We just say it, I read.